all the things i'm natalie today we are going to do a pantry and freezer tour um we've been doing a large pantry for many many years i would say 10 to 15 years that we've been doing this it's not something that we grew overnight but i do want to be an encouragement to you if you're just starting or thinking about starting having a um like an extra food storage for your family to just go ahead and get started because all it takes is buying a couple extra items each time you go to the store and before you know it you'll have a huge pantry and you might think well with the cost of stuff right now i can't afford even my regular groceries much less to add extra there's a lot of things i promise you that you can buy pretty cheap most cans of vegetables are still under a dollar if you just add a few of those each time you go or dry beans things like that but slowly build up all the things that your family uses, food, household supplies, and before you know it, you'll have a whole stocked pantry. Our goal for our personal family goal is roughly a year's worth of um, everything that we use on a day-to-day -day basis on hand. So that's not just food, but you know, laundry detergent, um, toiletries, all those kinds of things. And it's, it's like having food insurance. Um, if you were to lose your job or you had an illness and you couldn't work or you had unexpected expenses come up and you needed to focus your money on instead, then it would give you an opportunity to take a break from going to the store to buy anything because you'd already have it at home to be able to use. And um, I, just, I just hope that this video will encourage somebody out there to start their food pantry or keep moving forward with a food pantry that they have already started. Okay, this is my kitchen and you can see that this wall over here does have several cabinets to it. Um, so we'll just get started with this top pantry. Okay, all the way up here, those are some, well that's some dog treats that I actually need to send down at Jenny and Trent's house because Biscuit can't have those. but. Over here, I've got some cocoa and some hot chocolate. Then down here, I have my jello and my pudding mixes, and then some quick oats, um, cat treats. That's just one box of cereal that we're using right now because um, we keep the rest of our cereal in the pantry, but that way, whichever one we're using in here, we just go ahead and open one and use it up. I've got down here, I've got my vanilla extracts, honey, some peanut butter that's open right now. Back here is um, like all of our just quick cookie mixes, things like that. Um, that's what all that is. And then I've got, these are all of my cake mixes. And um, I try to do a good job, but I fail at it miserably. But um, of putting my dates on my stuff and then putting it out facing out so that I know like um, it's August and that cake mix has a date of September so I know I need to do something with it soon um, it will not go bad in September these Best Buy dates are you know they do have a longer life than that but I try to go ahead and use things as they're coming up on their expiration at least so that I don't have a bunch of expired stuff in the house um, this one we've got some just like quick pizza dough mixes some croutons um back there's like marshmallows there's a lot of baking stuff on this um this one i've got a couple things of syrup i've got all my extracts in this um basket so i can just pull them out easily to bake with and then this is just like sprinkles and cupcake liners and um just different stuff like that that i would be baking with and then I've got like all my breadcrumbs. I've got my, um, you know, different, several different, they go all the way back there. And then I've got more baking stuff, um, some Crisco, some, there's some caramel chips and some chocolate chips, stuff like that back there and some pie crust, um, a couple of like biscuit mixes and cornbread and then um down here on the bottom i've got some dry beans which we have dry beans in long-term storage this is just more of like just to be able to just use now um and my baking powder and my um cornstarch 
And I've got some pecans down here and some cake mix. Some not cake mix, pancake mix. If you haven't had the Sam's pancake mix, it's very similar to the um, Krusty's, Krustez, however you say that. It's pretty good. We've got, this is where I've got like my salt, like my ice cream salt, regular salt, and then my um, canning and pickling salts. And then back there, that's just some dry milk, which I bought before I had the freeze dryer. And I probably need to, I still have it on hand in case we need it, but I'm really loving the freeze dryer. And the milk from the freeze dryer tastes just like milk from like fresh milk. So I probably might just give that away to somebody and just do some more freeze dried milk now that I have the freeze dryer. Up here, I've got some stovetop stuff and mixes and then just like some um, canning gel, stuff like that for, for jellies and everything up there. Um, and then this one, I'm trying to reach y'all, I'm short. Uh, this one is like taco kits, pasta mixes, got a few rice mixes up here and then more pasta and they're you know just like they go all the way back and then more this whole shelf is pasta basically and uh, macaroni and cheese um, easy mac stuff like that that's that whole shelf and they're you know they go back there too and then down here, this is our snack cabinet. This is like, oh, y'all don't shame me too bad on these snacks. Anyhow, I've got, we've got our crackers down here, popcorn, cookies, um, things to just throw. I just keep these baskets in there because it's just so convenient, but things to throw in a lunchbox quick. Candy. Then down from that, I have some chips pretzels, more stuff just to throw into lunch boxes in there, and some more crackers. And then the bottom shelf, I've got my, I've got my, like, um, frosting in case, you know, I just don't feel like making homemade frosting. Um, these freeze-dried fruits, um, we bought these before we bought the freeze-dryer also, and they're okay, but the ones from the freeze-dryer are just, like, so much better. We just have not been eating them because we've been eating the ones from the freeze dryer instead. And I do need to go ahead and use those up. Down here we've got freeze dried milk, buttermilk, and eggs. And then over there just some um, pork rinds. Okay, and then also in my kitchen over here by the stove, I have these two cabinets where I keep like a lot of spices and stuff. And I just wanted to show you this. I got these at I think I got these at Walmart, but they do have something pretty similar at um, the Dollar Tree, and they fit um, your spice packets perfectly so that you can just keep them all organized in there. Um, like this one's just full of like taco and fajita and stuff like that, but um, I have several of them. There's one back there with like chili in it, and then one over there with like um, this kind of stuff in it and then there's some back there that have like meatloaf and gravy seasonings and stuff and they just keep everything nice and neat and organized so that you can find it fast and it's not falling over um, in your cabinet and then down here I just have stuff that I'm using right now that's open like um, you know olive oils and stuff like that um, and then that's there's the right over my stove and then in this one um, that's like just marinades and seasonings. Um, there's no way I could actually show you. Oh, it's a mess in there, but there's no way I could actually show you all the seasonings that are in there. There's seasonings in there too. And this one, bless it, this is like a, a Kinder's, uh, Kinder's commercial right there, but I do have some good seasonings. And then... Over here on the sides, I do have some spices there as well on both sides of the window here, just on the sides of the cabinets. And then um, that's just our regular fridge and freezer that's in our kitchen that we use. You know, that's what's full of like all of our stuff that we're using all of the time. And then in here, this is our pantry room. Hi, Biscuit. 
And then up here I have, um, I have all of our extra spices up there. And um, down here I've got some more pancake mix. Um, these are full of my muffin mixes and I've got them just, you know, like a couple different varieties in each basket, but that way I can just pull out the basket and it keeps them nice and neat and keeps these bags from falling over on the shelves. Um, and then back there, I've got some grits and oatmeal and stuff like that. Then down below that is our drink mixes. Like I've got our tea bags and some, um, breakfast essentials. Um, those don't go there, but I didn't have anywhere else to put them. So that's where they are. Um, apple cider and like, um, you know, hot chocolate, coffee. Then I've got my Gatorade and Kool-Aid mixes. And then down below that is paper plates, plastic cups, um, extra mason jars, more paper plates, trash bags, and tissues, stuff like that. Next to that shelf, I have up here, I have all of our cereal. There's some more cereal in another spot. And then down here, um, we have our like pie mixes, pumpkin, um, canned fruits, cranberry sauce, milk, um, evaporated milk, sweetened condensed milk, coconut milk. And down here we have our, we got some baked beans, we got our Chef Boyardee, and all of our pasta sauces to go with all our pasta in there. And then down here I have an overflow of like condiments, more honey, syrup, um, different things like that. And in the back there's some more freeze dried milk. And those are those pickles we made together in a video the other day. Um, some more Chef Boyardee. And down here, what's in these totes, this is all in like Mylar bags. Um, the sugar's in Mylar bags, but and there's a couple in there I need to get into a Mylar bag, but um, there's no oxygen absorber in with those. And then the powdered sugar and brown sugar is not even in Mylar bags, it's just in the bags they came from because they're not, they're just to have extra, not really for long-term use. Um, the cornmeal would be in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber. And then the flour is in, ox in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. And so is the rice. It's more flour. Now, let's see if I can maybe show you. They're really heavy, but that's how we have our rice in there in the Mylar bags. And then above that, we've got our, um, I got these at the Dollar Tree, these little canisters, but they're full of like different dry beans and I've got them labeled. They're ones that we're using now um, that we just, you know, already use. And then extra condiments, lots of extra condiments and stuff. And then more condiments, ketchup, mayonnaise, mustard, you know, peanut butter and jelly, all of that kind of stuff. And then like salsas or dips, pickles, olives, stuff like that. Up here, I have our, these are like just those rice sides. And then these, um, these are, there's three rows of these, but we're not really a big fan of those. They're okay. They're, they're fine for a quick side, but they were on sale at Kroger and I got them for like a quarter box. So I did pick several up. But that's another, another tip for building your stockpile would be get stuff on sale and then add coupons and stuff to it so you can get it even cheaper. And then this is just all of our um, uh, instant mashed potatoes. These Bear Creek soup mixes, if you've not tried them, they're really good actually. Um, these are kind of like a hamburger helper. They're okay, there's only a couple of them. There's not a lot on that shelf because it's just not something we eat a lot of. And then that up there, that's not food storage. That's like my um, my electric skillet and my Instant Pot, my um, stuff like that. Then up here, I have several more bags of cereal. And then over there is some jalapeno jam, well, strawberry jalapeno jam and some peach jam that I canned a while back. And then on this shelf, I've got like all of my pasta rice sides, um, pasta sides, I mean, 
and they're just in these baskets again just like my muffin mixes just so i can get to them easily and over there i've got like my um pastoronis and then back there's my potatoes and sweet potatoes and then that's kind of just like emergency supplies for like you know we had in a hurricane or something we don't actually get hurricanes where we are we're too far inland but we are close enough to areas that get them that we do get some really nasty weather sometimes off of them. So um, we're always prepared, you know, in case the power were to go out. And then just some like tin foil, saran wrap, stuff like that. And then down here is where I have like all of my um, sandwich bags, things like that. And these utensils, these stay over here because uh, I don't use them. They're just for if we were to not have power. So that way I won't get into them like I might be others that are over there. Um, down here we have my, that's just my water bath canner and my, um, pressure canner. Then right here is our freeze dryer. So we keep our freeze dryer right here in our pantry room. That way it's in the house. It can stay a little cooler. It doesn't have to work as hard. Plus I have the ease of going right off from the kitchen to load it and unload it. I know a lot of people keep them in the garage. Those are Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers, and that's that's just some oil that I am filtering for the freeze dryer. And then down there is just some more um, mason jars and our food saver. Over here in this corner, I have our paper towels, and I usually keep, there's three and a half right now, and I have found that four paper towels and four toilet paper from Sam's is roughly one year for us. So when we finish this one, then I'll order another one so that I still have four. And then that's the same thing with the toilet paper. There's three of them back there. And we have started using that one. So when it finishes, I will, um, there's another one down there. I will, um, I guess y'all can see. Yeah. I'll uh, get another one of those. That's just my, my bags I take to Sam's. Then we've got our um, Clorox wipes up here. And like ramen noodle, that's just, all that is up there is extra egg cartons and stuff like that, um, you know, to keep our eggs in from the chickens. And one of those crock pots that holds like three at a time. And down here, I've got a lot of our canned meat, like our Vienna sausages, spam, ham, corned beef, tuna, um, roast beef and chicken, stuff like that. I've got our cans of soup. And then like this can right here that's dented. Um, if I had gone in the store, I wouldn't have purchased that. I would have tried to get ones that were not dented, but I got that on grocery pickup. It's fine, um, but I moved it to the front instead of the back, even though it's newer, so we could go ahead and use it because you wanna keep cans that are in pretty good shape if you're gonna keep them for a long time. Some more soup, canned soup mixes for cooking and stuff like that. Then down here, this is like my whole vegetable, um, my vegetable shelf. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera real bad. I've got them. There's some of them I didn't have room to spread every, everything out, but like if it's pinto beans here, then that's that whole row is that. And then like, that whole row is navy beans and that whole row is chili beans. So I can tell what's in each area. They're not just mixed together, but I didn't have enough room to just give everybody its own area. And y'all, y'all know me and Margaret Holmes. She knows how to season something. So I've got some lima beans, butter beans. Um, these are like the best peas. If you've not ever tried these the peas, they're the best. And then these are the ones we use in biscuit stock food. Um, and then like stuff like this, like artichoke hearts, we don't use those very much. I actually have two recipes that we really make with those. So, um, I only have two cans of them because I'm probably not going to use them much and I don't want to store a lot of something that I'm not going to use. That's the other thing. You want to store things that you are going to eat. That's the whole point um, of having a food pantry is to have things on hand that your family does enjoy. Vegetables. Then down here, um, these totes. Both of these totes right here are full of, or, well, this one's not full. They have water in them. This one we've been drinking from. So when we empty it, I will buy water and fill it back up. I'll probably go ahead and get water this week for it. Fill it up, and then we'll start drinking from this one. And when it gets empty, we'll fill it back up. And that way, 
we're not um that way we're going through the water and that's not our long-term water source that's just water to have on hand that we do already drink anyway and then back here i've got two of these 25 pound bags of rice that i need to get into some mylar bags i don't know if you could even see that there's another one back there but there is um, I need to get those in some mylar bags and get them into some totes as well. Then we just keep like our overflow drinks over here in this area. And then these totes, all these are, this one's actually empty. Um, that's just my harvest basket I carry out to the garden to get eggs and stuff. But this one is actually empty. I moved it to the top so I could start using it. This one, we've got full of stuff that we have been freeze drying. So, um... That's like all of our different things we've been putting through the freeze dryer. And then this bottom one is actually just some extra mason jars. And I guess now I can show you our freezers. This one, I know it's old and I know it looks rough, but it works really good even though it's like 20 years old. So as long as it works, I have no plans to replace it even though it is a, it's a little ugly. <laughs> um, it's full of just vegetables, except I do have some butter over here. If you've not, if you didn't know, you can freeze your butter and it, it it's fine like that if you can get it on sale. Um, but this one is just vegetables and it's just pretty much all the way down there with vegetables. Then, those are more snacks for our lunches. Then this freezer over here, this one's pretty old too. Um, it came, it was a hand-me-down from Jamie's mom and dad to us and things like that I think are just a blessing. Um, at that time we had purchased, um, a whole pig and we needed somewhere to put it and they said, well, you can have our freezer. So, uh, that was a long time ago, but that's how we acquired that and I'm so thankful for them for that. This is our meat. So this is just beef on this, um, this whole shelf is beef. So it's like hamburger meat, cube steak, roast, you know, stuff like that. And then this whole shelf is chicken. I've got leg quarters, chicken breast, you know, all that different stuff in there. And then down here is our pork. So there's like, there's ribs, there's bacon, there's sausage. Um, there's a ham back there. There's pork chops. And then down here is, um, pork shoulder, pork loin, um, and that's just some of Biscuit's dog food. Some extra dog food I finally got made for her to put in the freezer. And then in the door, we just have there's some more butter, and this is some hamburger meat that we just got from a local butcher. Um, Biscuit, you checking it out to see what's in there too? Yeah. That's that one. All right, and then heading back over here, that door you see in the middle, that is actually our laundry room. And that is where a lot of things are that um, like um, laundry detergent, obviously in the laundry room, but you know, extra toiletries, things like that. All right, this freezer, it does have some damage to it, but that would be another tip would be freezers have gotten expensive lately. And we actually bought this one. And then the fridge I'm gonna show you in a minute, we got from um, a place that sells like, you know, the return merchandise pallet merchandise and this this was only $120 from there And it just has our quick meal stuff in it like um, corn dogs and Pizzas Our breakfast things we made together the other day um, These are like the best pot stickers ever y'all if you've not had them from Trader Joe's I, I definitely recommend trying those but that's what's in there, stuff that we eat. Um, there's some fish sticks down there. It's just stuff that we eat. That we can throw in the, the oven quick for a meal. And then this is the other, for, the other thing that we got at that same place, and it was $130, and it has some damage right here. And that's why it was um, there, and that's fine with me. I don't, I don't care, but there's really not much in it, to be honest. The freezer's kind of full. Um, it's just got, like, some breads in it and some drink mixes and stuff like that but there's really not much in this refrigerator the refrigerator is mostly just um we use it for overflow and right now there's just not a lot in it the drawer is full of cheese down there and then um we've got like some butter and stuff in the door and some milk but 
there's really just not much in uh, that one. And then this is just, that next to it is just a tote of extra cat food and my, my chicken boots for going out and cleaning the chicken pen. And then this is some um, milk that I actually freeze dried for a friend that she just hasn't come to pick up yet. You know, I can't remember if I said this at the beginning of the video or not, but you know, let, let this be an encouragement to you to start, you know, to a food storage of your own because you never know when you might need it. And you may have some friends or even family that does not support your decision in that. And that's okay because, you know, they get to live their life and you get to live your life and the way that you want to and what you think is best for your family. And I think that having a food storage is, is important. And, um, I just want to encourage you to just keep going if you're already doing it and get started if you're not. And I thank y'all so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. Bye.